turn in our Bibles to Psalms 8. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. It's always great to be in the presence of our God. Hallelujah. Amen. The Psalms read, O Lord our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? Out of the mouth of babes and suckling hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest that thou mightest steal the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy finger, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passes through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Heavenly Father, we come to you in that great name, the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving praise to you, O God, because you are worthy. And Lord God, our hearts rejoice over thee, Lord, because of the victory that you have won. And it's by your grace, Lord God, we have been made more than conquerors through Jesus Christ our Lord. And Father, we lift up our voice in song. We lift up our hearts in praise, Lord, giving you the praise and honor that's due unto you, Lord, for you are our God. Father, as our brothers and sisters make their way, Lord, be with them, Lord. Keep them, protect them, bring them safely through the house of the Lord, that we all may worship you together. Father, we ask again that you anoint us all in need, Lord, that you may receive praise of all. Be with Brother David just now, Lord. Continue to minister to him, that he may come and minister to your children, that we all may minister praise unto you. We love you, we praise you. Commit this service along with ourselves into your hands in Jesus Christ's precious and holy name. Amen. Let's offer unto our God a hand clap of praise this morning.
Lord. They actually put me in the wrong song. <laughs> we were supposed to go. We have come into his house gathered in his name to worship him. We ain't going to get on that one right now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's sing this little song together. I left my computer so I don't have any of the songs before me. Hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Hallelujah.
sort of left me, but it's, it'll come back to me. Amen. Everybody say Amen. Everybody say Amen. Oh, everybody say Amen. 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 Come on, cheer and say
kisses are on you And through it all, through it all it is well And through it all, through it all My eyes are on you And it is well with me Yeah. 
Jackie, we were just talking about how Jesus came in the midst of a storm walking on the water. That storm didn't mean anything to him. Then Peter stepped out in the midst of the storm and was walking on the water. But Peter made that storm a factor and he began to sink. The storm wasn't a factor until you make it a factor. There was a time when Brother Branham was on the Colorado mountain. And as he was walking, getting ready to try to make his way back down, right. God told him to go back in the midst of the storm. And what a blessing he received on the other side of it. He spoke it out of existence, and then he walked with God. God gave him the glorious pr pr privilege, asking him, come, walk with me. Amen. So through it all, keep your eyes on him. Praise the Lord. Sister Tanya, when you come this morning, God bless you, sons. God bless you. Y'all pray for me as I attempt this little song. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace, grace that brought my, my liberty. I did not know just how he came to love me so. But he looked beyond all of my faults, and he saw my needs. Amazing ways shall always be my song of Grace. For it was grace that bore, that bore my liberty. I did not know just how he came to love me so. But he all of my thoughts And he saw, he saw my needs I shall my eyes to Calvary Holy soul, 
and he was blind. All of my faults, and he saw my needs. I shall forever lift mine eyes to Calvary. keep Sister Brown and the, the church up in St. Augustine in prayer. You know, with Brother Brown being gone, it's a first for everything. And having a first meeting without him, you know, it weighs heavy on them. So we want to keep them in prayer. We want to keep our brothers and sisters over in Israel in prayer. And we just want to pray for one another. All of our brothers and sisters across the lands, we want to keep them in prayer. Sister, you have the announcements. <laughs> Praise the Lord. There'll be... Uh, no service this Friday, and we'll have the church potluck dinner June 24th after service. Brother Smiley, his meetings be this weekend, June 15th through the 17th. We'll have the combination service June 24th at 6:30 at Boynton, Be <coughs> Boynton Beach. Excuse me. And Brother Wesco's meetings, the concert will be Wednesday, July 11th. Services July 12th through the 15th. The picnic will be Saturday, July 14th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. You must register online. See Sister Tina? Oh, yeah, there will be service on Wednesday. Brother Troy, he'll be here ministering Wednesday night. Amen. But you must register online. See Sister Tina or Sister Erica for the link to register online. God bless you. We'd like to ask the brothers to come at this time and take up this morning's tithing and offering. Most gracious Father, creator of the heavens and the earth, Lord, we give you thanks, Lord, once again to come this morning, Lord, to be in your presence, Lord. Father, we thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. We thank you for your honor and, your, and, and the ability to honor you and praise you, Lord, and to lift you up. Father, we ask you, Lord, to bless these tithes and offering, Lord. Oh, God, may they you be used for the furtherance of your kingdom, Lord. Father, bless the hands that are give and those that have the desire to give, but maybe cannot at this time, Lord God. But we ask you, Lord, to lodge everyone's coast, O oh God, that they'll be able to give and give abundantly, Lord, with joy and, and honor and peace, Lord. Father, bless the remaining of the service, Lord, as, O oh God, as you prepare our hearts, Lord. May we all be, O oh God, united, Lord God, in your spirit, Lord, to receive that which you have from, for us today. Granted, Father, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. His strength is perfect when our strength 
this God He'll carry us when we can carry on raising His power the weak become strong His strength His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can carry us. Praise in His power the weak become. His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. He'll carry us when we can carry on. Raise in His power the weak become. sin and shame but Jesus found me and he changed my neck he could have let me drown he could have let me drown he could have let me drown but instead he took Come on, let's say it again. Well, I was singing in a sea of sin and shame. But Jesus found me and he changed my name. He could have let me drown. No, oh, he could have let me drown. He could have let me drown. But instead he come on love lifted me. Hallelujah. So love lifted me. Love lifted me. And when nothing else could help love lifted me. So love Love, 
the Lord. Amen. We're going to move out of the way. We're going to ask Brother David to come at this time. Amen. Let's sing this little song together. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Amen. It's the anthem of the believers. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Uh, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Oh, I was, was walked by come to the house of God for. Amen. Is to give him praise and glory. Amen. Let's just bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we love you this morning and we appreciate you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy to us, O oh God. For your amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like us. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your being who you are. Thank you for your grace, oh God. Lord, I pray, Lord God, that you just help us now as we endeavor to try to speak your word to your purchase, bride of Christ, Lord Jesus. Pray, Lord, that you'd help us this morning, Lord. Help us to get ourselves out of the way, Father, and let you do the speaking, Lord Jesus. That's what we want, Father. That's what we come to the house of God for is to hear from you, Lord Jesus. Lord, may I just be an instrument, Lord, that you can speak through this morning, Lord Jesus. I pray, oh God, that you just help us, oh God. Be with us, Lord. God, and Father, we know, Lord, that the Word's already anointed, Lord. Just anoint lips to speak it, Father. Anoint hearts and ears to receive it, Father. Lord, I know, have no way of knowing what these people have need of, Father, but you do, Lord Jesus. I pray, Lord, that you just speak to us, out of your word this morning, Lord. Father, speak to us. Lord, if it's to rebuke, let it rebuke. If it's to exhort, let it exhort. Whatever it's to do this morning, may thy word have its preeminence in the service this morning, oh God. Thank you, Lord. Once again, Lord Jesus, because we know we have a promise. You said that the one word goes out, it will not return back void. For when it goes out, it will go out and it accomplish what it is set to accomplish. May it do that this morning, Father. We thank you for it. We ask these things, Lord Jesus, in the lovely name of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. 
you have your Bibles this morning, just turn with me. Try to get right into this because we've got to leave right after service. We've got to go to be in Brother Danny's service uh, tonight, Brother Danny Steeman. So you just pray for us and you know, wish we could stay around longer and you know, greet each and every one. But, you know, but we appreciate Brother Jack having us while he's away. Amen. We just appreciate that. and. Hey Amen. We just love Brother Jack and Ron. We just appreciate getting to see each and every one of you again. Hey Amen. Here and so you just pray for us this morning, and we just want to get right into this. And you pull fast. Say Amen fast. I'll preach fast, and we'll get out of here fast. Hey Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to the Book of Revelations, the second chapter. Like I said, just appreciate him having us while he's away. Appreciate Brother Quentin just opening his home up to me and my wife, and just to. Good fellowship yesterday and you know, last night, just this morning, and so we just appreciate that. Amen. May the Lord bless him also. Amen. We just appreciate that. Revelations chapter 2 and verse 1 says, Unto the angel of the churches of Ephesus, write these things, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. My, it's Christ. In the church, amen. Christ indeed, which is the life of the church, amen. No other life. And without Him, it's just a religious society. If He ain't in here this morning, if He ain't with us this morning, it's just a meaningless gathering of people. Amen. I trust that He's here this morning. Verse 2, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou us. Can us bear them which are evil? And thou hast tried them which say thou are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. Oh, how beautiful. The Savior prays and command, commends His people. Amen? He said, I know thy works and thy labor. He knows all about us this morning. Amen? And He takes into full account of their attitude. Amen? Don't ever be discouraged. God's not ungracious. Amen? Verse 3, and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from which thou art fallen and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which, which I also hate. He that hath the ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give ear the tree of life, or give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of the word. You may be seated. I'd like to maybe take for thought for a few minutes. Left our first love. Left our first love. And like I said, here it was, he, he addresses this to the angel of the church, which Paul was the angel of that church, we all know. Amen. And he said, these things saith he that holdeth, is Christ talking, because he held the seven stars in his right hand, and he was walking in the midst, and like I said, no other life, and amen, except his, and without him, this morning, this, 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 this gathering, this meeting would be, It'd be just meaningless. We'd just be gathering together. But I want Him here this morning. And I trust that He's here this morning. I mean, we prayed. Uh, we asked God to come. Amen. And be with us. We asked Him to come and dwell amongst us this morning. Amen. We prayed for the service before it began and everything. And, uh, and I'm sure that uh, I think Brother Quentin said they some of y'all gathered here this morning for a prayer meeting. I'm sure y'all prayed for the service. And that's what we want, because we won't surely want Christ here with us this morning. Amen? Because if He ain't here, then we soon go home. Amen? Amen. We might as well soon go home, because it won't mean nothing. And then He begins to say, I know thy labor and thy works. Amen? And, and, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which said they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars. He was commending them. Amen. So, you know, I thought, my, it is good what other people say about you. Because we, every one of us here this morning, if we be honest with one another, we want people to say nice things about us. 
I want somebody to say something nice about me. And you want somebody to say something nice about you. Yeah. Amen. We always, we're that. We're human beings. And, and, and in just that way, we, we want people to like us. Uh, uh, we don't want to be disliked. Uh, we want to, we want to fit in. Uh, uh, we don't want to uh, uh, be a, uh, like a misfit or, a, or an outcast. Uh, we want to fit in somewhere. And, and, and it's nice, like I said, what, what people say about you. And if you got friends and, and, and that's good. Because even the Bible says, he that has friends must show himself friendly. Right. Amen. But, but I, let me ask you this question. Amen. Like I said, it is good what other people say about you. And it's good that you, that you got friends and that you can show yourself friendly. But what about the Lord commending you? What does he have to say about you this morning? What's he have to say about me this morning? Because see, there's no big eyes and there's no little U's. Uh, Amen. There's no big, it's like this. Uh, somebody told this guy, this preacher years ago, and you might have heard of him by the name of Jack Toe. And they told him, said, Jack, you better, better be kind of calm down and be quiet and uh, not, not get too excited because, uh, the mayor's in the congregation. So he gets up there and he says, I understand the mayor's in the congregation this morning. He said, let me tell you something, Mr. Mayor. He said, if you don't get right with God, he said, you'll go to hell just like the trash man will. Amen. Amen. So that's the way it is. Uh, God don't have no, uh, He's not a respect of persons this morning. Just because I'm who I am, uh, just because I'm a preacher, because you may be a preacher, maybe because you can sing good or, or whatever it is, that don't make it with God. We gotta have our hearts right. We gotta have our attitude right. We gotta have our, our life right. Amen. That's what I want. I want my life right. I want my attitude right. I want my thinking right. I want my life right. I want my walk right. That's what I want. Amen. And so it's good, like I said. But what about, what's the Lord have to say about you? Amen. What does He have to say? Get, let Him get you under His microscope. See, some of us may be only Christians by profession. Oh, we can talk the talk, but can we walk the walk? I'm talking about myself this morning. Amen. I don't want to just be a Christian by profession that I'm a Christian, but I want to be a Christian because God has come in my life. Amen. And birthed me by a new birth down on the inside of the inside. Yes, Amen. Not by what I do. Not by how I act. Not just because I come to church. Amen. But I want to be a Christian because I'm born again. Yes, That's it. Amen. Let me ask you a question. There's a little statement that I've seen one time. It said if you were arrested for being a Christian, wouldn't there be enough evidence to convict you? I'm talking about myself. Amen. Wouldn't there be enough evidence to convict you? Oh Lord, help us this morning. Amen. They said that he commended these people. He said, hey listen, I know your works. I know your labor. I know your patience. And how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles. And that you and they are not, and you found them to be liars. I take all that into full account, and I has borne, and has borne, and has patience, and for my name's sake, thou hast labored. Ah, he said, and has not fainted, but you've labored for my name's sake. You've had patience. You've borne the the the, the burden, and you've had patience, and, and all this, and you've labored for my name's sake, and you haven't found it. Fainted, but listen in verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. And that's that you've left your first love. Amen. Let me read that verse 4. Out of the Amplified if I can. It says it like this. But I have one charge against you. I have one charge to make against you. That you have left. Abandoned. The love that you had at first. You have deserted me, your first love. I thought, God help us this morning. 
and we look around. Amen. We've been here, you know, the message and, and the, some of these messages that we can go back and look at what the prophet preached some of them 50 years ago. And then we can look at our lives and how long we've been here. I wonder how strong our love for Him is this morning when it was when we first started. Jeremiah 2.13 says it like this, For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me. Oh, can you imagine? Forsaken Him. The very one that can take us in a rapture. The very one that can give us life this morning. The very one that can save our souls this morning. That the very one that if you're in trouble this morning, He can set you free. But He said, they've forsaken Me. The fountain of living waters. They've forsaken me. Oh, God, help us this morning. I wonder how close we are this morning to Him than we used to be. Oh, you remember when you first got saved, when you first came to the message, how close are you now? How much do you love Him? I'm talking about Him. I ain't talking about the prophet. Amen. Well, I believe the prophet. I love the prophet. Amen. But I'm talking about Christ this morning. How much do you love Him this morning? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. How much do you love Him this morning? Said they've forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and they have hewn for themselves cisterns, broken cisterns, which cannot hold water. Amen. They cannot hold water. They said they committed two evils. First, they've forsaken me, the fountains of living waters. Then they hewn to themselves cisterns, trying to, have, trying to get something that a whole water without Him. It's a broken cisterns. Yeah. Amen. Cisterns which cannot hold water. Right. Now, I believe God has created me and you this morning for an intimate relationship with Himself. Yes. Amen. He wants us to love Him above everything. Yes. He wants me to love Him more than I love my wife. He wants her to love me, Him, more than she loves me. If I should quit this morning, she would. I, my desire would be for her to keep pressing on. If, I, if she should quit, I believe her desire would be for me to keep pressing on. And that's surely what he wants. I remember when the prophet of God, he driving down the road one time, he asked his wife, Sister Meaty, he said, How much, he said, Who do you love the most, me or him? She said, Bill, as much as I love you, as much as I care about you, said I love him more than I love you. Oh, she said, he said that's the very answer. That's the answer I was wanting to hear. Amen. Oh, he's created us oh, the church this morning for that intimate relationship with him. Amen. Oh God, help us this morning. Amen. And in keeping that relationship with him must be our top priority. Amen. God, you helped me this morning. Amen. To keep that relationship between me and you top priority, Lord. Don't let nothing get in the way, Lord God. Help me, Lord Jesus, because things may get in the way. Amen. When, I, I, when, the, 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 when the, the, the prophet said for, and we wanted to get closer to God, we'll read our Bible and pray every day. And so many times things get in the way of that relationship. Amen. Because I believe that's our relationship. That's our communication with Him. Amen. For To get in there and read that Word. Amen. And not only read that Word, but get in there and listen to them tapes and then begin in there and begin to pray. Amen. And talk talk to Him. Amen. And let Him talk back to you. Have that personal relationship. Amen. One on one. I remember what the prophet of God said about that black woman. You remember when He talked about it many times when He was in Memphis. Amen. Tennessee, and how that the plane, you all know the story, how he said the Spirit told him to keep walking. And before he knew it, he was down there, amen, and he said, and in the back part of town and all that, and he began to, you know, said keep walking, and he seen that, he called her Aunt Jemima standing out by the fence, by the gate of the fence around there, and as he, he started walking by, and she said, hello, possum. And he said, how did you know I was a possum? He said, I seen you coming. I seen you coming. Amen. And she began to tell a story. She said, hey, you remember the Bible about the Shudamite woman? She began to identify herself. 
in the Word of God. Amen. I mean, that's what me and you need to do. To get to identify ourselves in the Word of God. She said, I'm just like that woman. Amen. Oh, that's right. What I want to do, say God, and begin to identify. And say, God, and if you've got a problem, amen, identify yourself in the Scripture with some Bible character. And if God will work it out for them, He can work it out for you. Amen. And so she, she, she said, Parson, and she, you remember, and then she went into the, and she wasn't concerned about his ministry. She didn't even know him. Didn't care about his ministry, about if he had a gift, uh, a ministry, a, a gift of, for healing the sick or whatever. All she was worried about was her son was lost and she, he was dying and she didn't want to see him die in that condition. Amen. And the prophet went into that room. Uh -huh. Amen. He began to say, mm, it's dark. It's dark. He said, what's wrong? He said, oh, he thinks he's out on the ocean, lost in a storm. Told him what happened to him. Said he got mixed up with the wrong crowd. Took a social disease. Said he doesn't eat a hole from his heart. The doctor man was in here. Said he can't do nothing for him. Said, oh, my baby. Said, oh, he thought, my, still mama's baby. No matter how far he's gone, and stooped in sin is still mama's baby. Oh, let me tell you something to friends this morning. Brothers and sisters, no matter how far you're stooped in sin this morning, you're still one of God's children. He just wants you to come back. He just wants you to get back to your first love. Amen. Amen. And you know how he knelt down there? He said, Lord, I don't know if this is why. Hey, you told me to keep walking. All I know is you told me to keep walking. Here's where I'm at, Lord. And he said, now, Lord, now, Annie, you pray first. And you know what? He said, you knew that she'd been in touch with him before. You knew that she'd been in talk, uh, talk with him before. Oh, God, help me to live in such a way, Lord, that I can, when I get down on my knees, Lord, that people recognize that, hey, he's talked with the Lord before. He has that personal relationship. Amen. That's what I want. Amen. Hallelujah. And you all know the story of what happened. Oh, but what the point I was trying to make is that she talked to him before. She knew him. She had that personal relationship with him. That it, oh, that's what I want this morning. I want that to be my top priority this morning. Amen. Serving the Lord must be out of love and obedience and not a ritual or a tradition. Amen. It may be Sunday morning. It might be why a lot of us here, but I don't want it to be like that. I want to say, God, you're in my heart, and I want to come to church because you're in my heart. I don't want it to be out of ritual or traditions. Amen. See, we got second and third generation believers now. Amen. Let me read you a couple of scriptures. I didn't have these printed out, so you just bear with me real quick. Try to hurry along. My, my, my. Amen. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter and the fourth verse. Quickly now. Amen. Oh, you love the Lord this morning. Amen. Sixth chapter, fourth, fourth verse. See, we got second and third generation believers. But I believe God wants you to listen to something this morning. Amen. Listen to what He says. He said, Hear, O Israel. Amen. The fourth verse of the sixth chapter of Deuteronomy. He said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord with thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Oh, that's what He wants us to do this morning. Amen. It's to love Him. Amen. You young people this morning. And I'll quit. Mom and Daddy quits. You keep hanging in there. Amen. You keep pressing on. I don't care if Pastor quits. If Deacon quits, you keep pressing on. If song leader quits, you keep pressing on. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, And thou shalt love the Lord with all the heart. Lord God, with all thy heart. Verse 6, And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou settest in thine house. Oh, He wants me, amen, to talk about Him. Amen. When I sit in my room, amen, when I get up in the morning, He wants me to teach my children that. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So you talk about them. You teach your children. Diligently of these things. 
and shall talk about him when thou settest in the house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou layest down, and when thou risest up. In other words, keep talking about it. Amen. Keep talking about it. Talk about this message. Amen. So many times we let all the kids know today it's about some video game or this or that. And I ain't getting on nobody's pet peeves or anything like that. But hey, what about Christ? Do we know Him this morning as our personal Savior? Do we know Him in the power of His resurrection? Amen. 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 That's what I want to know. Amen. I've got to know it for myself. Yes, sir. Amen. Listen to what He says. Amen. He says, and he said, and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and thou shalt be a, as frontlets between thine eyes. Oh God, let me see it. Amen. Everywhere I go, let it be there. God, let it be there. Amen. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. I mean, my, they had it written everywhere. You got to have it written everywhere. Amen. Upon the post, upon thy gates. And it shall be when the Lord thy God have brought them thee into the land which is He swear to thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them to give thee great and godly goodly cities, which thou hast built us not, and houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and walls and wells dig which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then beware lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Amen. He said, "You, I want you to bind these things. I want you to tell your children about it. I want you to tell your grandchildren about it. Amen. Unless you forget what God has done for you. God, let me not forget this morning what God's done for me. Oh, I'm so glad that He saved my soul. We sung that song. It was amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Amen. Deuteronomy, or, or Joshua, the fourth chapter, he began to tell them. Joshua said, the Lord spoke to Joshua and said, Hey, when you come across this Jordan, you take a man out of every tribe, 12, 12 men, because there was 12 tribes, let them take up a stone and you put it right here where we crossed over Jordan at. And you lay them stones there that when your children come, in time saying, and they're going to come and they're going to ask you, what mean if these stones, you can tell them what the Lord has done. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. I want to let them know today what God has done in this our generation. Amen. Brother Adam said it like this, 1954. Everlasting life. Our foundation is sure. God has proved it Proved it to us by signs and wonders and pictures. Amen. Amen. That's why when my children come and my grandchildren and your children and your grand, what mean it these, these pictures? What's this that you can tell them what happened? Yes, that, but it don't stop there. You can tell them that just because the prophet is gone, just because Brother Brother has left the scene. God is still Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He can still heal, He can still deliver, and He can still set free. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. First Samuel fifteen twenty two says it like this. And Samuel said, That the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices. As in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. Amen. And if you read the if you read the story behind this, where Samuel, the prophet, had told Saul to go over into a certain city and destroy everything, destroy cattle, destroy everything, destroy the men, destroy the women, destroy the children. He said, "The children, yes, sir." Oh, God knew that little children grow up and act just like their daddy. Amen. We got to destroy everything. Just a little old spirit creep up in, and we better destroy it because if we don't, Amen. That thing will get bigger and bigger. Amen. Oh, help us, Lord. Amen. And because, and Samuel and, and Saul didn't do all. Amen. He began to listen to the people. 
Amen. And he began to listen to them. And Samuel told him, said, Hey, have you done all that the Lord commanded thee? And Saul said, Yes. He said, Then what's the lowing of the, uh, the, the oxen out here and the bleating of the sheep? Amen. Then he began to tell Saul, Hey, hath the Lord great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than to sacrifice. Amen. What is our attitude? Amen. Our worship. It may it can be just become a ritual, or do we really love the Lord? That's right. Amen. Yes, just sir. because this is Sunday morning, we come to church uh -huh. with the well. We're just at Sunday morning. We come. No, I want to come because I love Him. Yes, Amen. Amen. I want to come because I got Him in my heart, and He goes to church. Amen. And the only way He's got to go into church if He's in my heart is me carrying Him. That's exactly right. You carry Him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't want it just become a ritual. Just because it's Sunday morning and we're going to the house of God. No, I want it to become a love affair between me and Him. Between me and Him. Amen. Jeremiah 7.23 says, but, the, but, the, but this thing command I them, saying, Obey my voice, and I will be your God, and you shall be my people, and walk in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well. Unto you. Oh, one scripture says, Jesus said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Amen. He said, obey the voice of God, and it'll be well with me. Oh, how many wants it to be well with them? Then all we got to do is obey His voice. Amen. He'll bless our coming in and our going out. And we'll just obey His voice. Again in Hosea, Amen, 6.6, 6, it says, For I desired mercy. And not sacrifice. And the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. He has no desire for a half-hearted religious ritual. Amen. What we mean you need this morning is a heartfelt religion. Amen. In other words, when I say hallelujah, I want it to be heartfelt. I want it to be fresh when I say it. Amen. I want it to come from the bottom of my heart. Amen. Uh, uh, my, from the depths of my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. I want my praises to come from the bottom of my heart. Uh -huh. From the depths of my heart. When I lift my hands, I don't have to wait for the for the uh, the song leader or whoever's leading the worship. I don't have to wait for Brother Jack or whoever it may be to say, let's, let's lift our hands. There's something about it and inside my soul, inside my innermost being that i got to lift my hands and say, Lord, I love you. Amen. Lord, I appreciate you. Hey man, yeah. there's just something about it. Yes, sir, I gotta worship him. Yes, sir, I gotta lift my hands. Hey man, I gotta sing. I gotta go to church. I gotta do all these things. Hey man, it's my love toward him. Hey man, I don't want to be half-hearted. I want it to be heartfelt. When I sang the songs of Zion, I want it to be heartfelt. Hey man, hallelujah. Our hearts on fire. Amen. To joyfully love Him. Amen. I want to joyfully love Him. Amen. Joyfully love Him. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. You know, joy comes from... It's different than happiness. Happiness, in order to be ha happen, happy, something has to happen because that's where it comes from. Ha happen in order for you to be happy. In other words, they have to sing you right. The favorite song. Somebody has to sing your favorite special. Or you be ha you have to get the raise on the job, and you'll be happy. You have to do this. Brother Jack has to shake your hand. If you don't, you won't be happy. If they don't sing your favorite song, you won't be happy. If you don't get the raise on the job, you won't be happy. But joy comes from a different source altogether. That comes from the Creator Himself. And if they don't sing my favorite song, if Brother Jack don't shake my hand, I'm still got the joy of the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, they draw near to me with their with their lips, but their heart is far from me. God help me not to have my heart far from you this morning. Amen. Again, the scripture says, Mark twelve thirty three, and to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, and with all the soul, and with all the strength, and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all hope and offerings. And sacrifices to love him with all your heart. 
with all your understanding, with all your mind. Now let's look at this for a little bit. Like I said, try not to hold you. Got to hurry. Hey man, he said, I got someone against you that you left your first love. What was our first love? Let's look at that a little bit. You remember when you first became, maybe you was a new Christian. First got saved. The Lord first dealt with you. Amen. When He first saved your soul. When He, when he first maybe went down to an old-fashioned altar. However, God dealt with you. Oh, you made Him all kinds of promises. You said, Lord, I love you with all my heart. I won't let nothing get in your in your way in my way of serving you, Lord. I'll tell everybody about it, Lord. I'll tell I, I, I'll, I'll tell my testimony far and wide, Lord. I tell how you took me off of drugs, Lord. I tell you how you took me off alcohol. I tell you how you brought me out of denominationalism. I'll tell everything, Lord. I wonder if we've kept that, huh? I wonder if we've kept that part. Amen. You remember when He first saved your soul? You've done whatever He asked you to do. Lord, if you want me to walk barefooted around the church, I'll do it, Lord. It was that sincere. Where about now? Huh? You remember when you first asked God? When you first, hey, when you said, Lord, I'll do whatever you do. If you want me to read, I'll read my Bible. I'll pray, Lord. I'll listen to them tapes, Lord. I mean, we were earnest. Nothing could keep us out of the house of God. Amen. Now, anything keeps us out. Yeah. Sunday morning, well, I know it's Sunday morning. I know I ought to be there. My post of duty, but you know what? Uncle so-and-so came over. Aunt so-and-so came over. Nothing would keep us out. You remember that when you first got saved? When we lost our first love. He said, I got someone against you. You left your first love. Uh -huh. Left your first love. Every word that proceeded out of his mouth was precious. I mean, you held on to it with all that's within your heart. You re I, I remember when I first came in the message. There wasn't too many message books, especially trying to get them overseas and different places like Africa and Mexico and places like that and the jungles and all that. It wasn't, and they would take one book, whatever they had. On that book would be worn, but they held on to it with all that was in their heart. If they had just one Bible, they'd hold on to it with all their heart. It was worn, amen? But now our Bibles are sitting on the shelf, dust collectors. Amen. That listening to tapes will become background music. Help us, Lord. Amen. What is it, Brother Dad? You've left your first love. Amen. I wonder if the loss of our first love that makes us tend our bodies instead of our souls. Amen. Because when we first got saved, Amen. When God first came on the earth, we, we didn't worry about what we looked like. We didn't worry about what anybody thought about us. We didn't worry about what anybody called us. Amen. But today, we want to worry about more what we look like, uh, what people think about us, what everybody's saying about us, than we do about our souls. Amen. Prophet said it like this. You go into a restaurant. You find a fly in your soup. You want to sue that restaurant. Amen. But you let the devil poke anything down your soul. And you don't say nothing about that. Amen. God help us. We left our first love. He said, nevertheless, I got someone against you that you left your first love. Amen. Stints our bodies instead of our souls. We don't have that blazing love like we used to. That burning love. That ridiculous love. Amen. Because we do anything. May seem ridiculous to the world, but we still done it anyhow. Heaven fellowship with Christ was my was what we wanted. Amen. Heaven fellowship with Him is what we long for. But now we care more about our ministry than we do having fellowship with Christ. You say, "What do you mean, bro? I don't want to go 
Help me, Lord. I want people to quite like me. I want them to like my ministry. We don't care about what how God sees us. Amen. We worry about too much what other people see us. Hey, I'm guilty. Amen. Young in Christ, when we was young in Christ, we'd do anything. Amen. Oh, Lord, we'd go to the four corners of the earth for them. But how little we do now. We lost our love. Amen. We lost our first love. There's a lack of prayer in our lives. Brother Brown said it like this. We can sing too much. We can talk too much. We can do all these things too much. But we can't pray enough. Now, where is it that we... Now, where is it? We may know more. Because we... Hey, now, hey, we got it everything. We got it on our phones. We got it everywhere we turn to. We got the Bible on our phones. We got the message on our phones, on our iPods, everywhere we go. Just a little bitty chip. We know all about the Bible. We know more all about the Scriptures. We know more. We're, we're older. Amen. But we're, we're wiser. We're richer. But we give all that up just to go back to our first love. Amen. Hey, guys, said it like this. He said, you earn wages to put them in bags full of holes. He can said, consider your ways. You sow much, but you reap little. In other words, I like what somebody said it like this one time. You got what you wanted, but you lost what you had. You wanted that big raise on the job. You got that, but you lost what you had. Your time that you spent in prayer. Amen. You got what you wanted, but you lost what you had. You, uh, you wanted this. You wanted that new car, that new home, but you lost your fellowship with God. Amen. Oh, help us, Lord. Lost our first. He said, nevertheless, I got someone against you that you left your first love. Oh, you got what you wanted, but you lost what you had. Huh? Let's look again. Where did we lose our love? Amen. We saw, we looked at what was our first love. We do anything for them. We read. We pray. We listen to tapes. We were earnest. Like I said, nothing could keep us out of the house of God. Every word of His was precious. We had that blazing love, that burning love, that ridiculous love. Amen. We did all that, but now we care about Hey, everything else, hey man, we care all everything else about everything else, hey man, instead of him, we care more about doing this and doing that instead of coming to the house of God, hey man. Now let's look at this. Where did we lose our first love? To the world, when we didn't have nothing, hey man. We have, but now we got more than we used to, but less grace for one another. Amen. Oh, we got more than what we used to have. When we didn't have hardly anything, we fellowshiped. We called each other over. They said, come eat supper with me. Let's have fellowship with each other. But now we got more. We don't have time to fellowship with one another. Amen. We got less grace for one another than what we had. Amen. Maybe we were a little bit closer to God when we had nothing than when now we got a whole lot more. Because we knew we had to depend on God. But now we depend on our insurance. And I ain't getting, I ain't knocking on all that. Hey, if that's alright, you've got a good job and it's got good insurance, hey, use it. But do we depend on that or do we depend on God? When your insurance has run out, Amen. When everything the doctor has, hey, he done all he has can do. And said, I can't do nothing else. God help me to depend on you. Let me depend on you before I depend on that insurance. Because Lord, I know you can heal. Oh, you might, I may have to go to the doctor. Them things are alright. I thought doctor may have to give me this kind of medicine. That, that, them things are, I ain't knocking all that. But let me depend on God while I'm going to that doctor. Say, God, you gave the doctor ability. You gave him the education. God, if you help him to help me. Yes, if that's how you're going to do it, Lord. Amen. But Lord, if you want to do a miracle, I'm all for that too. Yes, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 
We didn't have a whole lot. We was closer to God. We was closer to one another. Like I said, we had more grace for one another. Now we got a whole lot more. We don't have grace for one another. Amen. Too much with the worldly company. First love. Amen. We, the, when we had a, no company, it would shoot us. But the, but the, uh, you know, it would shoot us if we, if it didn't, it didn't all right, Lord. I, I, I I'm praying. I'm, I'm dedicating my life to you. But now we got company, worldly company, an ungodly boyfriend, ungodly uh, girlfriend, and that's all right, Lord. I'd rather take that than take your word. And God help us. That scripture says over there in Proverbs, can a person, can a person take fire into his bosom and not be burned? Yes, sir. You ever heard that old saying? I used to hear it years ago. You can't lay that down. If you lay down with the dogs, you'll get up with the fleas. Amen? Yeah. Or whatever. God help us this morning. Amen? God, we better be careful who we choose to hang with. Amen? Oh, we better be careful who we choose to run with. Amen. If they ain't getting me closer to God, then God, I ask you to help me, Lord, to just uh, sever myself from them so I can get closer to you, Lord. If they're driving me further away from you, Lord, then help me, Lord, to get back to where I was, once was. Help me get back to my first love. Amen. Oh, we talk about election. Amen. And them things are alright because I believe in the election. We talk about our calling. Hey, I believe God's called us. We talk about, we talk about sanctification. And I believe we need to see, live a sanctified life, a holy life. Amen. But sometimes we forget the pit where we were dug out of. You take this in the world. Out there in the world. Hey, I've been around some. You take people, sometimes that get promoted. They do the same kind of job you do. Work right beside you like you do, but they get promoted and get to a supervision supervisor's position. They forget where they came from. That's right. They forget, and they won't get. I told one guy this time. This may sound funny, but I remember me and this one guy was working together, and this guy we worked on Saturday. Saturday was overtime, and so we worked and. And the boss, he liked to get in there and work with us to get the job done. We had to stay the full eight hours. But he wanted, the supervisor, our boss, wanted us to get finished by 2 o'clock and have everything cleaned up, all of our equipment put away, and then we could hide to 4 o'clock. He said, I don't want to see you to time the clock out. Well, I remember this one guy, he said, we got to this place, we was doing some cleaning. He got to this bright room where you could sit down and smoke. He said, David, i got to just have a cigarette. So he went in there, and so I went in there with him. He sat down. About that time, the boss came in there. He said, what are y'all doing sitting down? He said, y'all need to get them get finished. Well, they uh, had a layoff, and my boss got laid off. Well, six months later, this guy that I was working with, he got promoted to supervisor. Uh -huh. And he said something to me one day, and I said, hey. His name was Jerry. I said, hey, Jerry, you remember back then when he said, all right, David, be quiet. He didn't want to remember. He forgot where he come from. God, let me not forget that pit where I came from, Lord. I was lost and undone without God or His Son. But you reached down your hand for me. Amen. Amen. It was amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I don't want to forget the pit where I was dug out of. Amen. It's my desire to live for Jesus. It's my desire to live for Him. And if you could see where He brought me from to where I'm at now, you would know the reason why I love Him so. Hey, glory. Yes, sir. Amen. I'm with you there, brother. Amen. Glory. Oh, He brought me from a mighty long way. Yes, it's my desire to live from Him. Glory. Amen. I don't want to forget the pit where He dug me out of. Put my feet on a rock to stay. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. We lost our first by neglecting communion with Him. Uh -huh. Amen. You know, that's my wife there. And she's my... We love one another. But one or today we decided not to talk to one another. Although we'd be married, but we ain't going to talk to one another no more. What a miserable marriage that would be. Right. What about you and the Lord? Right. He slipped that... Before the foundation of the world, he slipped that band of predestinated, unmerited grace upon your finger. 
You're married to him. Amen. He wants to talk to you. He wants to talk back to you. Amen. I want to talk to him. Amen. I want to talk to him. Say, Lord, I love you. Lord, words can't express how much I love you, Lord. But I want to try it with all my, with all that's possible within me. My human ability, Lord, to tell you how much I love you. I want to have that sweet communion with him. Amen. Oh, I remember there was this lady. I read a story about this lady. And she said it like this. He said, she said, you know, it would be nice if we could get together. All the apostles. She was talking about that. All the apostles and everybody. And we just have one big church meeting. And we could hear... But we could hear what Paul said. We could hear Peter's testimony. We could hear all these testimonies. We could hear all about this. One big, one big meeting. I thought, my, and you think about it today. Wouldn't it be nice to have one big meeting somewhere central located and we could hear Brother Donnie and Brother Biscoll and, and, and Brother Tim Pruitt and different brothers, you know, and the people that we look up mighty to, your pastor, my pastor, we could hear all the we could hear their testimonies and all that. That would be good. That would be good. Oh, I'd love to have a meeting like that, wouldn't you? But what about our own personal walk with God? It'd be nice to hear all of them. It'd be nice to have a meet like that. Amen? But what, what's it doing for me? What about my personal life? Just to hear their testimonies. Hear them preach it. I'll preach it, Brother Donnie. Preach it, Brother Pruitt. Preach it, Brother Jack. That's good. But what about my own personal life? My own time of prayer. My own personal closet of worship and attitude toward Him. It'd be alright to have them kind of meetings. Not knocking it. I, I love, hey, I, I'd be all for it. But what about my personal life? What's it doing for me? Amen. My own closet. If it's kept me out of my own closet, my own personal walk with God, then all the preaching I would listen to, all the good singing I would listen to, all the good testimonies would be in vain. If it kept me out of my own personal experience and personal walk with God. Amen. Our love for Christ depends upon our nearness to Him. He must be our friend and we must stick close to Him as He does. Amen. He must stick to Him and He must be closer than a brother. Or we never have our first love. Amen. You know why Pluto or whatever, they come up with another planet, but you know why it's the coldest? How many knows why it would be the coldest planet? Feathers from the sun. Why do we get so cold every now and then? Because we're getting far away from the S-O-N. Amen. We ain't close to the S-O-N like we should be. And because we ain't close to the S-O-N like we should be, we become cold. We become dead. And our church is set as dead as 12 o'clock midnight. Amen. And we try to get people to get in there and worship God. But because we ain't as close to the S-O-N as we used to be, we can't get nobody to say amen. We can't get nobody to raise their hands. We can't get nobody to work. We've lost our first love. Amen. That's good. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I read you some things the prophet said? He said, now I tell you, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But the salt lost its savor. It is henceforth good for nothing, but to be trod under the feet of men. And I say tonight, brethren, that the church, when it's lost its love, it's lost its savor. And now we become a laughing block. No matter how many gifts we got, how many miracles we can perform, how many anything, 1 Corinthians tells us that though I speak with tongues of men and of angels, I can move mountains with faith. I give all my goods to the poor. If I haven't got love, I am nothing. You lost the salt. When you lose, when you lose the love, and salt is the Savior, it is, it, if it contacts, there's only one thing left for the world, the church to do, that's to be salty. And God will make the world thirsty like you. That's right. They'll thirst to be like you if you'll just be salty. But we've lost that.
You want to be like you? Let me like. I wonder. I preached a message years ago. What would church be like if it was like you? Wouldn't start on time because some of us be late. If it's left up to some of us. We wouldn't raise our hands if it was to worship Him if it was left up to some of us. Because we don't raise our hands. If a church was like you, what would it be like? Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Again, He says, He said, I don't care if you're a Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, Presbyterian, Presbyterian, come, let us rejoice together. When that time comes, when the church finds its brotherly love, Amen. When the church finds its holy decency, when the church finds its place in Christ, in a call to the other members of the body, come and rejoice with us. God wants the church to love Him. Amen. Because He went on here in the first, the Lutherans lost her light. The Methodist church has lost their light. The Baptist church has lost her light. The Pentecostal church has lost her light. Every light seems to be gone. What about me and you? What about me and you? Again, He says... And then tomorrow night, talking in the Philadelphia church age. And then tomorrow night, when it goes out, just at the end, you'll notice, the angel appears right at the end time. And just at the end time to rebuke the church for losing its first love. And how it's got away from God like they did down through the, there, the ages. And at that time, the rapture comes to take the church home. The church goes up just at that time of the message. And we, we are nearing that age now. Did you get that? All right. See, just... At the time, the angel of the church, the messenger of the age, comes in to rebuke them for losing their first love. B bring, trying to bring them back. Same thing the messenger does tonight. The angel comes back to rebuild them. Each age like that for what they had done. So that makes a lap over in each every of the church ages. Just lap over one another. But like that, like climbing up a, sh uh, a step, it's laying in laps like that going up. But see, it comes and it rebukes. Why? Because they lost their love. And this and this and this. Again, he says, Our Heavenly Father, we can see, Lord, that the church has lost its first love. We can see that the church is full all over the nation, has dropped. Not only the nation, but the world. We realize that you spoke the other morning and said that the seeding time is over here. That the only place to sow seeds is in the foreign fields. This is a gleaning over the stubble. And, oh God, truly them words was right. And now tonight when we see those precious ones that's made a start, a fair showing in the flesh, trying to move up, they realize that their lives don't cope up with the Word. There's something wrong somewhere. they got pleasure, tempers, and indifferences. And, oh God, are, are ugly things that makes them behave and not act like Christians. They find themselves not satisfied. They're wandering about from one organization to another, from one place to another. Brother, that was in 19... 62, what about it now? We see the same thing happening. People not satisfied. Going from here to there. Wondering. He said they're missing something. It's time to get back, Lord. Amen. He said it's the sowing of the seed. It's, it's over here, he said. He said it's just a gleaning. Help us, Lord. Again, he says, and now, Father, that was you, not Solomon. That was you and Jesus. For he said, God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. He was the beginning of the creation. His body was the redeemed creation. And now through the ages, the church lost its first love. And now in the last days, you promised to call a little minority, the little flock, at the last days. Father, our hearts are jumping and my hearts are pounding when I think of that and know that your words are true. None of them can fail. Let these people today understand that. Let the sinner seek you at this hour before the gates close and there'll be no more time. Let the bride, as she starts getting out of step from this and that, may she come back into step as the vision showed it a few weeks ago. Y'all remember that vision? It came to you screaming, Get back in line! Get back in step! God help me this morning. To get back in step. Help me to get back in step, Lord. Amen. We looked at what our first love was. We looked, Where did we lose our first love? Now let's look at this. What me and you got to do this morning is to seek to have our first love restored. Brothers and sisters, young people today, though we be a child of God, 
And I believe we all are here this morning, our children of God. Amen? But if we've lost our first love, trouble is near at hand. I don't care who you are today, what your name may be, if we've lost our first love, trouble is near at hand. Amen. Whom the Lord loveth, He chasteneth, the Scripture says. He'll take the rod if our love cools. God, don't let my love cool, but if it does, take that rod, Your Word, and get me back in line. Help me to get back in step like I once was, Lord. Amen. Help me to get back up there. You know, I was thinking... You know, the brother, Quint told me, he said, going down there, you know, together to have, I don't know how many came this morning, but I commend y'all for that. Amen. You don't find too many churches that have prayer meetings anymore. To get together. I wonder what the world would say to us. Because when you first came, you remember, we talked about when we first met God. Our first love, it was blazing, burning. We did things that seemed ridiculous to the world. They could call a prayer meeting at church, we'd be there. But I wonder what the world says now. They look at us, we work beside people, and they say, oh, ain't y'all having a prayer meeting tonight? Yeah, but we ain't going. wonder what they think. wonder what they say. Oh, I thought y'all went to church this time and this time. Yeah, they got church, but you know, I don't believe it's important to go all the time, so I just ain't going to go. I wonder what they think. What people look at when they see us. When the, when the children of Israel, when they had to turn their backs in battle, you remember when Joshua told them, said, hey, the Lord promised, and he fell on his face, and Lord, you promised. Amen. I wonder what would happen when we turn our backs in battle and we die. Amen. And we die without the Lord. I wonder what people would say. He lacked moral and strength. And he died. He just drifted away because he lacked strength and lacked marrow. See, if we lost our first love, was I ever a child of God at all? Something to ask yourselves. The Bible says they went out from us because they were not of us. May I not think that I repented. And really, I not fully repented. I want to say, Lord, if I need to repent this morning, I want to repent. I want to fully repent. If I have to make things right, I want to make things right, Lord. Let me not think that I really repented and I have not. Help me, Lord. May it not be said that I only thought that I had love for Christ. Or love to Christ. And never had it at all. I don't want that to be said about me. Amen. May it not be true of me that I am as a wandering star for whom is reserved blackness of darkness forever. May I not think that I'm a child of God, but I, but may I not just thank it, but may I know that I know that I know. May I really know this morning before this service is over that I am really born again. I am really a child of God. Yes, sir. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Glory. Are there some here this morning? I'm talking to myself this morning. Are there some that profess, but they don't possess what they profess? We hear people, I've heard people saying, I, they get up, I heard a sister one time, she got up and sang, I'm sheltered in the arms of God. So let the dark clouds rise, the storm clouds roll, I'm sheltered in the arms of God. You've heard that song. Then all of a sudden something happens. Her and her husband go through a divorce. He was a minister. He quit preaching. She went to the world. Where's that shelter at? That she sung about that she was sheltered in. Right. Let me not just sing about it, but let it be a reality that I'm sheltered in the arms of Almighty God. 
Amen. And if I'm sheltered, let the storm clouds rise. Let the devil do whatever he wants to. I'm sheltered in the arms of the Almighty God. I go to church, but I don't really possess. I just go to be going. Oh, I attend prayer meeting, but I'm not really converted. I profess Christianity, but I don't possess what I profess. There's a song, Search Me and Try Me. Our heads bowed and our eyes closed. As we're closing. Search me and try me. That's what I want him to do this morning. Is search me and try me, Lord. See if there be any evil, wicked way in me. And if there is, clean me out, Lord. Clean me out today, Lord Jesus. Oh, is that what you want him to do to you this morning? Oh, let him search you this morning. Oh, I know this was just hard maybe. But he said he commended that church age. He commended every one of them. He commended. He commended. He said, oh, I, you, you, you labored. You haven't fainted. You, you borne the burden. You, you, you've had patience. You, 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 you found that them that called themselves apostles, you found out they were liars because you tried them by the word. And I commend you for all that. But I got something against you. You lost your first love. Oh, I wonder this morning. Oh, he may commend us. Oh, I commend you. Spirit and truth tabernacle. You come to the house of God. You do these things. You back your pastor up. You do all these things. But I've got something against you. You've lost your first love. You've done this. You've done this. You're not as really as salty as you should be. You profess, but you don't possess. You go to church. But you don't really. You're just there. You just go through the motions. All you attend prayer meeting, but you're not really converted. Help us, Lord. If you're here this morning and you want Him to search it, maybe just lift your hand and say, Brother David, pray for me. That I may the Lord search me and try me. Amen. God bless that hand. That hand. All my hands up to him saying, God, help me this morning. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, as we just bow our heads, Lord, this morning, Father. And Lord Jesus, I know, Father, that, Lord, I had to get in here, Lord Jesus. And, Lord, maybe I didn't do this sermon justice, Father. But, Lord Jesus, I pray, oh God, that you just help us this morning, Father. Because, Lord, when I preach, Lord, I, I, I'm not just looking at these people. I'm looking at myself, Lord. Because, Lord, Paul said after I preach, I have to bring my body under subjection to this Word. At last, I become a castaway. What a thing for the Apostle Paul, the first messenger, the first church age to say. That after he had preached to others, he's got to come under subjection. Lord, I've got to come under subjection to the same Word. Just because I'm a preacher, Lord. You don't have no respect of persons, yours, you said in your word, Lord, and I believe you. So just because I'm a preacher, just because I say I'm a message follower, just because I say this, that, and the other, that don't mean nothing in your eyes, God. You want to know that it comes from way down deep in the soul. Father, I pray, Lord, as we got our eyes, our hearts closed, bowed before you, Lord, this morning, Father, that you just search my life, Lord. Search these brothers and sisters, these young people that are sitting here. Search their lives, Lord, this morning, Father. Lord, if there's anything that's not like you, that's contrary to your word, Lord, would you get it out? Would you just grind it away, Lord? Would you just pull it out of our lives, oh God, and help us to keep pressing on, Father? And Lord, if we've lost our first love, Father, Lord, I remember when I first came in, Lord, I loved you. I listened to tapes, Lord. I've done this, I've done this, I've read, Lord. I prayed, Lord. But it seems like, Lord, sometimes things get in the way, things hinder us. We don't pray like we should. God, forgive me, Lord. Help me, Father. Help me to keep pressing, Lord, toward that mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Help us, Father, I pray. Help us to keep pressing on, Lord Jesus. 
Help us, Lord. Because, Lord, I remember when we first got saved, Lord, we promised you this and this. God, may we hold true to our promise, Lord. May these people, Lord, if there be any that's like that this morning, Father, that, Lord, they remember when, Lord, they came to an old-fashioned altar, wherever they were, and they gave their hearts and their lives to you. And they said, Lord, I'll do this and I'll do this, but they ain't been... They ain't been faithful to their vow that they promised you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that before they walk out these doors, they can renew that vow again. Say, Lord, help me, Lord. I'll read more. I'll pray more. Just restore my first love back. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord. Let me seek, Lord God. Let me not, Lord, if it's if it's worldly friends that I got, help me to sever them from my life and help me to keep pressing on, Lord God. Oh, they may call me funny, they may call me old fashioned, but let me keep pressing, Lord. If it if it's things that I look at or whatever I do, help me to just take that away from me, Lord, and help me to keep pressing in this hour that I'm living at, Lord, living in, Lord Jesus. Because Father, I look around, Lord, I see things going on, I see the world shaping up, Father, and Lord, we can eat. We can truly say, Lord, it won't be much longer. But, Father, where do I stand? Where do I stand, Lord? Help each and every one of us this morning here, Father. Search us. Try us, Lord. Help us. We pray, Lord Jesus. Forgive us for where we failed you, Lord. Help us just to keep pressing on. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hey, come, whoever's going to come. Amen. Let's just, let's just worship Him. Let y'all stand together. Amen. Let's just worship Him. Amen. You love Him this morning. Amen. We love Him this morning. Praise the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. So many great things that were said. You got to realize in a relationship, there's many things that cause cause a division in a relationship. You, you, you lose your first love. Sometimes you get a little too busy. You get so busy that you don't have time for God. Sometimes you don't recognize His presence amongst you. And sometimes you just become calm to one another. I know in the beginning when I first fell in love with the Lord and things started getting a little cold, there was a song that always stuck out in the hell. It was birth right here. Don't you let this gospel become common to you. When you do, you lose your first love. Another thing, you got to recognize the presence of the Lord when He's around you. Even when you don't feel Him, the Lord is there. You must recognize His presence. A man or a woman can commit adultery on one another if their spouse is right there with But when they're not away, that's when things take place. You must remain in the presence of the Lord. We had a warning this morning. Get back to your first love. You remember when you first fell in love with the Lord Jesus? That was the best thing you ever did. And now let's sing that little song together. Falling in love with Jesus was the best thing that I've ever done. Praise the Lord. Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Falling in love with Jesus Is the best thing I've ever Come on, let's say it again. Falling up. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling. Falling in Arms, I feel protected. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, I've never been connected. And there's no 
bless you, Sister Gavin. It's good to have you in the house of the Lord. Thank you for coming. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's also good to see Sister Lisa. Good to have you in the house of the Lord. God bless you, Sister. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, Father, we thank you for this word of warning, Lord. We don't ever want to get complacent when it comes to a relationship with you. Father, you are everything to us, Lord, and we must treat you as our God. Father, you're worthy of everything we can give you, Lord. So we want to give you our hearts, our lives, Lord, our time, everything that we have is yours, Lord. You created us, and we want to offer ourselves back to you, Lord. Father, we want to always make you the object of our affection, our adoration, Lord. We love you, and we never want to lose our first love, Lord. Help us, Lord God, to see you in one another, Lord. If I see you in my brothers and sisters, I love them. I know that I love you. Father, help us always to love your word, Lord, to keep it always in our minds and in our hearts, Lord God. May we pray often, Lord daily, Lord, three, four, five times, pray without ceasing, Lord God, that we may have communication with you, Lord. Father, that's what relationship is all based upon, love and communication. You have spoken this morning, Lord, and we have heard. Lord, we'll continue to speak to you. Thank you for coming by, Lord. We ask, oh God, that you'll keep brother and sister Gadman safe as they travel. Lord, bless the service tonight over at Brother Danny's, Lord. Father, minister to your children. Minister to their needs. Meet each and every need. Grant traveling mercies to your children, Lord, as we prepare to leave this place. But always recognize your presence, Lord. You abide within us. Lord, have your way, Lord. We love you and commit one another to you now in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. God bless you. May have your seats and our brothers will come dismiss you. Take me back to you, Lord, where I, I first.